All right, well, it is time to make my way back home. I plan on staying here quite a bit later than I did, but the power went out last night and I've been sitting here waiting for it to come back. So I can't really get any videos uploaded, which is really frustrating, but I guess that just means I just need to hit the road. So the plan for today is to get as close to Florida as I can and stop overnight. And then I will finish this up in the morning. So let's take a look at the trip in front of us. So somewhere in the ballpark of 1100 miles and one, two, three, four, five, six charging stops. I was able to get a pretty good charge last night um, downtown at a parking garage. So I'm sitting at 88% here at the Airbnb. So it looks like our first leg here is about three hours, 181 miles, should be there about two o'clock. It is currently 11 o'clock. So I'm also gonna stop and get something to eat on the way. Hopefully that won't take too long. Maybe a drive through or something, but um, not too bad. So ideally, let's see here. Ideally I'd make it to Florida, just to Florida. Um, there's no way I'll make it all the way home, but um, I'm also an hour behind. So at some point the switch is over but maybe I can make it to the Florida state line tonight, which would be pretty nice. We're at 1,152 miles for this trip so far, 372 watt hour per mile. So we'll keep an eye on how long this full trip ends up being. It should be about another 1,100 miles, so maybe 2,200 miles, something like that by the time we're all set and done. Let's go ahead and get moving. that was a really good stretch there um came in almost 30 minutes ahead of schedule things were just super smooth arrived at 16 percent, so a little bit lower than anticipated but it's supposed to be here for 20 minutes it is a v3 and it is in a bucky's parking lot so i'm gonna get plugged in i will try my best to hit this 20 minute mark um, but you can lose time very quick and easy in that place. That last leg, 181 miles, 361 watt hour per mile. There were a few miles on since the charge from the parking lot. So really good efficiency, especially for the speeds we were going. So let's go ahead and get plugged in and charge this baby up. Well, I pretty much timed that perfect. Uh, we are charged up and ready to go here. Looks like we'll arrive at 13% in Iowa, Louisiana, small little place. Um, but a uh, nice uh, location as well. Two hours and four minutes, 137 miles. Gonna go ahead and unplug now. Should be there about four o'clock. So we made it at 13%, still making fantastic time. 343, supposed to be here for 35 minutes, but we'll adjust that later. But for now, let's take a look. That last leg, 137 miles, 49 kilowatt hours, 359 watt hour per mile. So pretty good efficiency is continuing to be the case. Another V3 charger, which is great. And we're gonna get this plugged in and started charging. All right, so before I commit to making a change, that's still 171 miles. That's quite a distance and really not necessary uh, for the time it takes. So rather than going 171 miles, let's see what our options are. That's probably too close. What do we have here? This one right off the highway, V2, no. This one's a little bit farther off the highway. That is a V3 in Baton Rouge. But let me take a look and see if it's the one I'm thinking it is. All right, so it's not the one I was thinking it is. It is a whole intersection down, but uh, quite a bit closer and kind of split this stretch up. So I'm gonna add this as the next destination 
and it looks like by doing that we're ready to roll oh that was probably too much yeah so let's remove that and we may have been too late to make this change. So I see what's happening here, my mistake. So it's adding another stop before we get to Baton Rouge, which that doesn't make any sense. So to overcome this, what we're gonna do, remove all stops, and then it'll take us to Baton Rouge, 11% at the moment, and uh, we should be able to unplug here shortly, 119 miles. It does say two hours, so there must be some traffic, which it is in town. So yeah, we're actually getting off of I-10. Look at that, man, there's quite a bit of traffic. So um, that is what we're gonna have to do. So let's go that route. And then once you get on the road and get going some, um, once you get closer to that next charger, so once we get closer to Lafayette or past Lafayette, then you can go in and add charging stops and then it'll add everything up. But it sometimes if it's real close, it'll divert you to a closer charger. So this is how you get around that, at least for now. So it's a two hour trip, 119 miles, um, kind of a roundabout way to get there, unfortunately. So I'll keep an eye on this. Maybe this will open up later, probably a terrible accident, which is tragic. So we'll take a look at that and keep a really close eye because this can back up just as easily and uh, we'll figure this out. So let's get unplugged and make our way to Baton Rouge. So after a slight detour, we did make it at 546. So a little bit ahead of schedule after traffic was considered 17% at arrival. And we did 115 miles, 38 kilowatt hours consumed and a very good 331 watt hour per mile. But we were off the highway for a good stretch of that and it was not very fast. So supposed to be here for 20 minutes to make it to this place in Mississippi. So I'm gonna go ahead and get plugged in. And it is in the parking lot of that uh, grocery store that I hit on the way down here. There's a subway over there, by the way. Do not be confused, this gas station I found out is actually abandoned. So uh, yeah, there are some options over this direction. Don't go that way, because there's some people that you don't wanna run into over there. Anyways, gonna go ahead and get plugged in now. All right, so we are wrapping up charging here at 68%. Next stop in Mississippi at 12%. We have 137 miles to go, about two hours. Be there 8 p.m. Central Time. Gonna go ahead and unplug now and hit the road. here in Mississippi and it's supposed to be here for 30 minutes which actually uh, this time that might actually be the case because um, I'm kind of getting hungry and I'm gonna have to walk somewhere to get food because I don't have time for like sitting down at Outback for example but there should be like a sandwich shop around or somewhere there's a Walmart across the street and uh, I'm sure I'll figure something out so I am gonna get plugged in here at this v3 charger and this last leg, 138 miles, 46 kilowatt hours consumed, 332 watt hour per mile. A decent amount of construction, so average speeds were kind of on the low end. 
but uh, 19% gonna plug in now and get rolling. All right, so we are all charged up here at 79%. This next leg is 154 miles, two hours and seven minutes. And it looks like we will be in Florida once we finish this leg. So we are making good time. Should be there in just a couple of hours, uh, about 1040, 1030, something like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get unplugged and hit the road. Alright, so we arrived at 15% here in Crestview, Florida. We're supposed to be here for 30 minutes, which of course we won't do. That last leg of the trip was 154 miles, 59 kilowatt hours, 386 watt hour per mile. So a much higher consumption. Uh, we had a lot less traffic and we're able to do higher speeds. So gonna go ahead and get plugged in and then I'll be right back and we will figure out how to split this next charge up. All right, so let's take a look here. We wanna split this up. So let's see, instead of going all the way over here, somewhere in the middle would be good. There's a V3 right there in Mariana, Florida. So let's add that as our next destination. Looks like only need to charge here for 10 minutes. Yeah, it's only 86 miles. Maybe we'll stretch that. Let's try Let's try one a little bit farther out. That's probably too short. All right, let's see how far away Lamont, Florida is. I think that's probably what it was just a moment ago, wasn't it? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so I am... Um, kind of in a weird spot. So yeah, let's do this Mariana spot. It's the better choice of these two. Let's get rid of Lamont. So Mariana, we're only gonna be here for 10 minutes, actually six more minutes to make it there. It is only 86 miles away. And since we're V3, we are just pumping the kilowatts right now, which is awesome. Nice speed, 252 kilowatt charge rate. Um, and this will just be a quick 86 mile jaunt over to Mariana, Florida. So I am going to let this finish up real quick and we will get right back on the road. All right, so that's our cue. We are done charging at 45%, super fast to get to 45, pretty awesome. Should arrive at 12% in about an hour, nine minutes, 86 miles away. Gonna go ahead and unplug now and we'll get to Mariana. So we arrived at 9%, supposed to be here for 10 minutes. So another quick charge here. That last leg was 87 miles, 34 kilowatt hours consumed and a whopping 397 watt hour per mile. So a couple things are happening. Temperatures are dropping and the air and the moisture and all that is happening. So plus we're not having to slow down. So efficiency is starting to go down but I am all by myself, was just here a few days ago, pretty wild, uh, but there's a, uh, I guess a Dairy Queen, a Dickies, a McDonald's, and then if you walk, you can get to a gas station, but that is it. Uh, there's another gas station across the street there, I guess. So not much. Let's just let this thing charge up for nine minutes. All right, so we just finished up charging at 46%. Should be able to make it at 10% uh, in Lamont, Florida, which is just past Tallahassee. 
an hour and 13 minutes, 83 miles, be there about 1.40 a.m., maybe 2.40 a.m. when this time changes at some point between now and then. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug now. arrived at possibly the hotel tonight um, I selected this one because we've got a wall connector and it's only one so it was really a risk but it is uh, available so as long as there's a room available we'll be good we only have like 23 more miles to go to Lemon Florida and uh, that would have been a 20 minute charge so as long as there's a room I'm gonna be able to skip that charger altogether so that last leg was 58 miles 24 kilowatt hours 406 one hour per mile I'm gonna go ahead and plug this thing in and see if we get lucky all right so a little bit of good news they did have a room available pretty good rate um and based on how nicely this thing is put together and how new it looks i'm hoping for a really good charge so let's take a look so yeah this is going to be a good charge 48 amps 200 volts 8 kilowatt charge so um we're gonna be all set in the morning, which is really good because um, we only have like four hours left or something like that. So um, after I get some sleep, wake up whenever I wake up, it is 2.20 in the morning. And with all of that, I will catch right back up with you in the morning. I did get another wonderful night's sleep. However, this is gonna sound weird. I'm not just saying this, but I've had to stay in hotels quite a bit over the last couple weeks instead of sleeping in the car. And I don't like it. Now, when I'm with the wife and the kids, of course, so we got to do a hotel. That's fine. This is not even fun. I prefer to just drive, stop when I'm done, jump in the car, get some rest. It's just so much more convenient. And for the way that I like to travel, yeah, I'm not really digging this whole hotel thing although every few nights is fine every couple nights yeah i miss sleeping in the car as you can see i'm pretty well rested feel like i got some of the best sleep that i've gotten in a couple weeks just last night i don't know why but um took my time this morning it is now 10 20 i am going to get some breakfast on the way out but this destination charger came in absolute clutch. So let me show you what we have in front of us now instead of what we were looking at, which was two additional stops in the morning. So to get home, we have one stop, just one stop, and it says a five minute stop. Now I will uh, charge more than that because I might as well get quite a bit of charge before I get home and uh, not too bad, it's really, I think, I think it is, let's just see, how many miles is it? If I remove stops. Now turn right onto North Monroe Street. It's about three and a half hours without charging. So 244 miles, so not bad at all. Uh, let's go ahead and add that back in so I don't have to drive super slow. So there we go, Ocala, our first stop here. It's about two and a half hours away, 182 miles, and we are sitting at a wonderful 90% this morning. So going to go ahead and get rolling, get some breakfast on the way out. arrived here in Ocala at 17%. It says five minutes, but again, so this is my last stop. So I'm gonna stay here until I get pretty full. We'll see 
how long that ends up being and how full I get because I only have 63 miles to go and uh, I like to get pretty well charged up before I get home when I have this kind of time. So that last leg there was 183 miles, 67 kilowatt hours consumed, 366 one hour per mile. So with this last little stretch, hopefully we'll be around this range and uh, we'll have finished this trip sitting here in the parking lot of a Wawa, which is always appreciated. So gonna get plugged in on this V3 charger. All right, so we're at 90%. So charged it up all the way. Should be home about 240, 63 miles to go, a little over an hour. And I think it's because this rain is just hit and miss, but it looks like as soon as I get south of where I'm at right now, we'll be good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rolling and I will pick this right back up once I get home. Well, that's it for me. I made it home 65% on the clock. It is 2.30 in the afternoon. Here's the final numbers that last like 63 miles, 22 kilowatt hours, 355 watt hour per mile. Total trip, 2,269 miles, 835 kilowatt hours, 368 watt hour per mile. And this is the one I wanna focus on because compared to the Model Y, that's really a question that many of you probably have. So this same trip, at the same speeds that I was doing would probably be about 330 watt hour per mile in our Model Y. It's a 21 long range. Um, that kind of efficiency compared to this, we're talking about 10% ish. So call it 10 to 15% additional consumption, but the battery is about 25% larger. So there's a couple of things there at play when it comes to range or that discussion of the X versus Y, only that part of the discussion. Because the battery is so big and with the updated chemistry, it charges super fast. This thing, uh, the one time I was paying really close attention, I went from 11% to 33%, I believe, at 250 kilowatts. So super fast charging for a very long time. In the Model Y, you'll get up to 250, but it'll start tapering down really quickly. Even at like 70%, you're at a 100 kilowatt charge rate. So this thing charges super fast and really makes a big difference in um, this car because it is less efficient. It does consume more energy, but you can get energy recharged rather quickly in this thing. So it uh, certainly makes up for it. You cannot beat the comfort. This thing was so comfortable on this ride. Really awesome. Really enjoyed the extra space, but the cooled seats, air suspension for the win. I have the big wheels on this and you can't even tell. It just rides so smooth and super quiet. Now that doesn't all come without its flaws. Um, the yoke steering wheel was fine on road trips as I predicted. So when you're just going straight down a highway, it's fine. So it looks cool and it's fine on that. But as soon as you get off the highway, this thing gets clumsy again. And if you have to use a turn signal while you're turning, it's freaking annoying. I hate that part. And I did have to use the horn twice because somebody almost hit me and um, I couldn't get to it fast enough. But anyways, enough about that. Next piece, the active noise canceling in this car. There is something really wrong with it. I put a short together. Hopefully it's up by the time you're watching this, but um, is so loud. Like when you get in this car after having stopped for a while, it sounds like a jet engine firing up. And the first time I heard it, we were close to the Tampa airport and I really thought that it was a plane taking off. Uh, but it's happened many times before. So as soon as you open the window, it's gone. It goes away immediately. So that's how I figured out that's what that noise is from. It's really odd. It's very unusual. But hopefully that'll be a fix with a future software update. Another software update I'm looking forward to is getting a trip card, please, or more efficiency data while I'm driving. I can't continue to go to the trip page on the menu to find out how I'm doing. We do have some simple graphs, but they're not good enough. Well, I want more consumption data real time in front of me. Given that's something that was in the previous Model S, Model X, I am sure that that's coming to the screen in front of me and hopefully a trip card too over here on the uh, big screen. One other drawback that I found out on this trip, this pillar right here has become a blind spot for me. I, when I'm merging onto the highway, I have to pay special attention because I didn't realize this was a blind spot until two times I started coming over and fortunately I caught it out of the corner of my eye with the camera over here 
and then followed by their horns that I was getting into their lane. So this is a blind spot. So got to get used to that. There are no other blind spots and visibility is very good generally speaking, but that's not good. So I got to get used to that. I'm not here to talk about, is this worth it over the Model Y? I'm just sharing with you how awesome this road trip was. It was very good. There will be tons and tons of content about the Model Y versus the Model X, I promise you. And answering that question, uh, I think there's a few ways to answer it. And there's a few different answers depending on how you look at it. So anyways, another fantastic trip. Here's what I did the last two weeks. Between the Model 3 and this trip in the Model X, 9,526 miles in just over two weeks, which is absolutely absurd. But man, that is a ton of miles and it was so awesome. I love doing road trips and part of going full time, one of the things I was really looking forward to was having the time to do these road trips more often. And it's been really good having that time and being able to do this. So I really hope that you guys enjoy road trip content because I love going on road trips and I love sharing that with you. Another thing that I also like doing is camping in the car and I can't camp in this car because we have the six seat configuration. So there's no really good way to sleep in this car. And that's one of the downfalls. And if you can push yourself away from the convenience of day to day of the six seat, cause it is super nice you can get so much more use out of this car than, um, than the six seat, uh, at least when you're on road trips. I hate checking into hotels. I like just going at my own schedule, stopping when I'm tired, go to sleep when I want to, but I can't really do that in this car. So that was another drawback, but man, such a nice car to travel that many miles in, you know, on top of using autopilot basically the whole time, um, this car only has basic autopilot at this moment, so comes in clutch, as many of you know. Anyways, that's going to wrap it up for now because I need to get inside and see my family who I have been neglecting for two weeks now. So I need to go spend time with my family. So I do hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, of course, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, of course, subscribe to the channel as we continue to post content regularly. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Bearded Tesla. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll catch you next time.